Roy Takumi represents the 36th district, uh, 30, is the 36th representative district in Hawaii State House uh, Representative and serves as the chair of the House of Representatives Education Committee. He was first elected in 1992. From the start, he worked tirelessly for public education in our state. While Roy's commitment to and passion for Hawaii's public education system is well known, what has always impressed me is his careful and focused attention on current education research. I can't tell you how many times Roy has cited an education study that I had to go and look up because I didn't know about it, and I know I'm not the only one. Uh, thank you, Roy, for being here. I think all of you should really read Professor Roth's paper. Um, I actually read it, and I never for a New York Minute doubt Professor Roth's passion for education. However, concerns that I have about Professor Roth's paper. One was on Act 51. As you all know, in 2004, we passed out what we modestly called Reinventing Education Act of 2004. And in fact, we kind of learned that marketing trick from the administration because if you remember, the bill to have local school boards was actually called Let the People Decide Act of 2004. I thought that was really nice of them because I thought, oh my God, you're going to oppose this thing called let the people decide because of course the converse of that is you don't want the people to decide. So uh, touche for um, those in the governor's office who came up with that marketing approach. But when we pass out Act 51, if you recall that whole time, governor vetoed the bill. And for the first and only time in her tenure as governor, she called it a soft veto. I don't know what that means. I do know many of my bills, she just gives it a hard veto all the time. She doesn't mind that at all. But this was called a soft veto, and then the governor said, if the legislature would be open to it, all they have to do is five easy fixes. And in the paper, Mr. Roth um, says, we did nothing, and that is absolutely not true. We took another bill, House Bill 2002, we amended that bill to incorporate the five proposals that the governor made and then we amended Act 51. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the legislative process, this is what we did. Passed out the bill, governor veto, soft veto. We overrode it, I guess hard. We overrode that veto. And then three days later, amended that law. That's highly unusual for us to amend the law that was in effect for 72 hours. And again, if the governor felt that bill was shibai, she had a very interesting way of displaying it, because she could actually sign that bill into law. So there was a good faith effort, I believe, on the part of the legislature to try to address the concerns that the governor had about principals, about school community councils, about charter schools, and so on. Uh, the paper makes no mention of this attempt to amend Act 51. But let me get to my last and most important point. There's many, many references made, uh, both by Professor Roth and the governor, that unless 90% of the budget for the schools the DOE's budget goes directly to the individual schools, then it's fake. It's not true reform. And of course, one of the examples we use is Edmonton, Canada. And for those of us who had the privilege, I was one of them to actually visit Edmonton, Canada, and actually talk to one of the former superintendent, Mike Strembinski, who Professor Roth actually introduced me to. And Mike and I had many, many hours of discussion um, that if you look at Edmonton, Canada, roughly 92% of their operating budget goes to the individual school. But if you were to find out, name me one school district south of the Canadian border, we have over 15,600 school districts in the United States that allocates 90% of their operating budget to the individual school. The answer is none. There's not one. Now, Edmonton does it. Well, first of all, it's a foreign country. Let's keep that in mind. They don't have no child left behind. Edmonton schools, for example, the cafeterias, do not, they don't have free or reduced lunch, which we do as a matter of federal policy. Students there have to pay lunches at cost, whatever it is. Edmonton, Canada does not allow each school to decide whether or not they have athletics. Some schools choose not to have athletics. Only 10% of the schools have libraries because they've decided, based on their school population, that they don't need or don't want to pay for a library. We require our schools to have a library. Now, if we wanted to give our schools 90% of their operating budget, and Principal Alcuni can speak to this herself, it would mean, and I know Professor Roth said it doesn't necessarily mean, but it would mean <coughs> that these schools would have to handle their food service, their bus transportation, hazardous waste disposal, workers' comp claims, 
unemployment insurance claims, JPO insurance, and on and on down the line. And the principals, when I talk to them, all of them, to a principal has said, they don't believe that is their core mission, and they don't believe handling food service adds to the academic achievement of their students, and they would prefer to concentrate on those things that do.